hey what's up guys welcome back to my channel so in this video let's talk about drones in Canada especially in 2019 Transport Canada has launched a new law on June 2019 if you own a drone now you pretty much have to have a license and you have to register your drone otherwise you're flying illegally the moment I heard this of course have to find a way to you know get licensed and fly legally right this video it's not a study guide uh, this is more like a tips and tricks kind of thing I passed my basic exam yesterday I just came up with around 10 to 15 tips and tricks for you guys to get both mentally prepared and physically prepared you know when you go on a battlefield you know how to handle your emotions and how to make proper decisions if you have not yet passed the test and you want to know a little bit more about the test before you take it um, this is definitely the video for you so I put some time steps in the description so feel free to check it out and find the right without further ado ladies and gentlemen let's jump into it so number one if your drone is anywhere from 250 grams up to 25 kilos you have to have your drone license in order to fly your drone penalty comes to into three main sections first one is if you put your aircraft and people at risk you're gonna get penalty and if you're flying without a license or certificate you're gonna get penalty and if you unmark or unregister your drone again you're gonna get penalty and how much is penalty uh, penalty has the individual and the cooperation or businesses if you're an individual if you fly illegally you might get up to a thousand dollars without a drone license a thousand another thousand for unmarked drone another thousand for you know where you can fly another three thousand for putting aircraft or people at risk for cooperation it's five thousand five thousand up to fifteen thousand uh, if you put people at risk we're not here trying to scare each other we're here just to kind of know the legal aspect of it and so we can fly with a cautious and hopefully you guys are not going to get penalty anyway right so you want to come to transport canada again this link is in the description you want to have an account with them if you don't simply come on this page and you can get an account with them as soon as you log into your back office you're going to see three different sections first one is register your drone this is where you're going to register a drone after you pass your basic exam and uh, the fee for registration is five dollars and um uh, the exam is ten dollars we're going to touch on just now earlier we talked about that um, if your drone is between 250 gram up to 25 kilo you have to have a license so i came on uh, amazon so i thought about these little toy drones there's a little toy drones let's check out their weight this guy is 300 81 grams you have to probably have a license to fly this little guy right same thing here this little guy is probably 290 grams this is shipping weight though so again you're probably gonna have a license flying this kind of toy drone from now right so we quickly cover two different types of exam the basic exam and advanced exam they call it small basic and small advanced what I did was I took the small advanced first and then I filled at 60% and then I came back down to basic exam and I passed the basic my tip number one for you these two different tests both are ten dollars each pre attempt if you pass you will get your score and uh, certificate right away if you didn't pass you have to wait for 24 hours in order to take it again which is mentioned right here for the small basic advance you had you're gonna have a 35 multiple choices questions and you have about 90 minutes the pass score is 65 percent or higher um, for this exam you have a plenty of time I'm gonna mention later on in this video you have a plenty of time here so don't rush it take your time this is an open book exam you get to google it you get to find any resource you can find to answer the questions so as soon as you pass the basic you're going to receive um, a certificate looks like this you want to print out and carry it with you what i recommend you is to have a you know both physical copy and a digital copy in your dropbox or 
Google Drive or something on your phone. So even if you, let's say you lost a physical copy, you can pull the digital one anytime you want. So for the basic operation, you have to be at least 14 years of age and you have to, and just pay attention to this red box I marked. Your maximum altitude is gonna be 400 feet, which is 122 meters. A lot of DJI drones, you can manually input the maximum altitude. So just put 122, okay? Don't go beyond that. And the most important thing is you cannot fly within 5.6 kilometers of any airport or 1.9 kilometers of any heliport. Lastly, you have to have a minimum of 30 meters, which is 100 feet horizontal distance from people. So again, except your crew or yourself or your client, just have to keep the distance around 30 meters. And one more thing, I don't know if it's mentioned here, you cannot fly around advertised events such as like outdoor events or social events or concert like that. You have to avoid forest fire. You have to be able to visually see your drone at all times. So just remember, these are the safe instructions of flying the drone after you pass the test. Let's talk about a few tips and tricks that might help you to pass through the exams. So when you log into your portal, you're gonna pick one of the exams. It's gonna show you all the clear instruction. You're gonna choose your exam. You're gonna have the basic or advanced. So for you guys, just go with the basic one. Leave the advanced alone for now. I took advanced first. Just let you guys know how advanced this is, okay? So this is a screenshot I found. He has 45 years of pilot career and he wrote every Transport Canada exams from private commercials, instruction. And he said last week he gave a try of the advanced exam. He said by far it's the most irrelevant and a difficult written test he's ever seen. And if he failed at 64%, the pass mark is 80%. A lot of questions here. I mean, it's really tough. So go with the basic one. What I recommend to you guys, even though you haven't prepared for the exam, it's $10. So I would strongly recommend you to just take it so you know what kind of questions are coming at you. So you know what type of content you are dealing with. And hopefully first try you can pass if you don't don't get upset just come get better prepared and i'm going to show you a few tips and tricks that can help you to find answers quickly remember this is an open book exam right so there's no study guide that's the funny part about transport canada dig through at you with all different pile of um, documents they just said we're going to cover here 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 and go study yourself but they're not gonna say, here's a study guide. There is a no study guide. So I'm gonna leave all these PDFs and link in the description. If you have a dual monitor setup, um, you can project your exam on the main screen and the secondary screen, you can definitely open a whole bunch of uh, PDFs and tabs so you can quickly find the answers here and there. I have an iPad open in front of me so I can, I have another, source to quickly type some questions and find answers that way so google is going to be your friend in this exam google is going to give you a pretty decent direction of where the answers could be what i recommend you guys to do is if you find a question uh, copy the question first to google to see if you can find the answer there if you can't um, trying to narrow down to a key phrase or keyword and type that keyword to Google, it should be able to find the direction of it. So when you type it, don't focus on these titles and the URLs. Pay attention to these little small paragraphs, okay? Especially uh, if it's bold text. So pay attention to those, give it a fast read, fast scan through. You should be able to find some decent information and also pay attention to the Google's own Q&A here. So you're gonna find some really, really similar or accurate questions and you just need to expand that by reading it through quickly. And you should be able to find um, a lot of answers this way. You need to understand what it's talking about. And second, I linked a few websites 
that helped me, especially this one. Again, this page helped me quite a bit. Type command F so you can search a certain keyword here. I do not recommend you to copy paste the whole questions or a whole bunch of keywords. Try to narrow down to one or two keywords and uh, command F open this and typing or paste your keyword here. In my case, I just quickly typed goggle and it's gonna locate exactly where that keyword is located. But if the question is talking about night vision goggles and stuff, so you can quickly read this whole line or two and to understand when to use goggle. For example, are you able to use goggle and stuff? Try to locate the answer here. So again, command F, try to search a lot of keywords, not the whole questions. The whole questions work well with the Google. So definitely type if you have a whole bunch of um, big questions like this, like, you know, just pay attention to these little small paragraphs. Um, so for example, it's asking MF, you don't know what MF means, it's mandatory frequency, quickly locate your information and try to pull the, the data and uh, the answers from there. And my next tip, if you do not understand the questions, simply skip for now and then come back later. I'm pretty sure your high school teachers taught you that too. If you're not sure about the question, simply skip that question and come back later and to deal with it later. Same as the next tip is don't leave any empty questions because it's a waste, right? You have a 25% odds of getting the right answer and with a little bit of technique, you can probably boost that up to 50%. Again, don't leave any empty questions. Even if you go with a gut, don't leave it empty. Next little trick. Let's say you have A, B, C, D, four different multiple choices, right? And uh, by a give them a quick read, and if you find out that A has a really, really long explanation and B has a little short, C and D are very short, there is a higher chance that A might be the right answer. Again, you have to read it. If it makes sense, then definitely pick that answer. And next one, A, B, C, D again. You can actually locate the right answer by finding the wrong answer. If D and B both, when you read the answer and you know 100%, they don't make any sense and they're a the wrong answer, then meaning the right answer is between A and C. So pay attention to A and C. So that way, you just boost your accuracy from 25% odds of each answer to 50-50. This trick helped me a lot. Last two little tip, first of all, don't rush it. Don't rush your answers or anything. You have a plenty of time. Because think about it, small advanced exam, you have a one hour, 60 minutes for 50 questions. That's about 1.2 minute pre question. You have to know your stuff in order to go through this exam. But the basic exam, you have an hour and a half for only 35 questions. So you have a plenty of time don't rush it. Take your time and uh, do your research. You can find answers on Google. Come to these PDFs and sites and search the keyword and stuff like that, right? Put yourself in an environment that there is no distraction. Turn your phone off for an hour or mute your phone. If you have a family around, definitely tell them you're going to take this exam. Again, put yourself in an environment that there is a zero or a few distractions so you can remain calm and uh, don't get scared or anything, okay? So it's 10 bucks, right? If you didn't pass, who cares? Just study a little bit, read through some of the things and come back in 24 hours and try it out again. I'm pretty sure eventually you should be able to pass the test. As soon as you pass your certificate, Definitely print out this sheet of paper and carry with you as a physical copy and definitely keep a digital file as well. Just in case if you lost a physical copy, you can always pull out the digital copy to show it. So lastly, don't forget to register a drone. This takes only $5 and uh, you're just punching your brand, your model, and uh, they will give you a code. Print that code out and... Um, stick it to your drone, you will be able to legally fly your, your drone. 
I'm really curious of how DJI gonna handle the sales volume because a lot of motivated drone buyers after they heard about the, the law they're probably gonna change their mind and not gonna buy the drone so I wonder how DJI is gonna handle their sales volume in Canada and that's just a thought and let me know what you think Hopefully this information helps you to pass your exam. And uh, if you have any questions or observations, definitely comment below. If you have any interesting experience you want to share to others, definitely comment below as well. I'll give it a read and reply you there. And hopefully everybody pass their basic exam and get their drone, capture some beautiful cinematic footage. I'll keep you guys posted because I'm definitely going to go for the advanced exam and lastly i'd like to mention is that don't get disappointed but think about it when everybody else is scared and they are not going to fly their drone what they're going to do they're going to hire the person who has the license who is professionally flying their drones so that is going to open a market for us right so people or company going to hire people like us to fly the drone or to capture the drone shots for them that will have a better source of income and uh, open up another market for us and hope you guys pass your exam good luck with it let's stay in touch thanks for watching this and i see you guys in the next one take care